The next example, instead of being given a line and being asked to determine the slope, we're given a slope and asked to determine or draw a line. Now, um, where you start, where you put your first point on your line is pretty much up to you. Just pay attention to these numbers here, okay? Um, uh, uh, a line segment with a slope of four ninths has a rise of four and a run of nine. So you want to make sure that you put your point far enough to the left that you can actually get that run of nine in here. So if I put the point here, so my first point, okay? From that point, I'm going to have to go up four. Do I have enough room to go up four? I'm at one, two, three, no, I don't. And put it there. Let's put it down here. Okay, from that point, my first point, um, I'm going to have to go up four, so I'm going to go up one, two, three, and four, and stop. Um, and then I'm going to go over from the top of that line, I'm going to go over nine units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let me just make sure I've counted that right. One, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I have nine. So that's nine units. Put another point at the end there. So I went up four and I went over nine. And this is my rise. This is my run. So now to draw that line segment, I'm just going to connect those two points. And that is an example of a line with a slope of four ninths. Okay? There are, you know, lots of lines that have slopes of four ninths. It all depends where you put your first point. Um, B is an example with a negative slope. So negative 8 over 3, the first thing we do is we take that negative sign and we put it with the, numer with the numerator, with the 8. So negative 8 thirds is rewritten as negative 8 over 3. So um, since I have to be able to drop down 8 units, I want to make sure that I get um, fairly high on the graph. So I'm going to start up here. Okay, that um, there's my first point. It's at it looks like uh, negative two and three. I'm going to drop down eight units. So I'm going to go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just going to count that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I got that right. And then I'm going to go over three units. Okay, put another point at the end of that line. So I went down eight units. So this is my, well, it's not really a rise. Well, it's, I guess it's a negative rise. It's a rise of negative eight, which is really a drop of eight. And it has a run of three. And so to finish it off, I would just take my start point and connect it with a straight line to my end point. And that is a, a line that has a slope of negative 8 thirds. Okay? So that, what you just want to be careful of is watch the numbers and make sure that your start point leaves you enough room to get your end point in. Okay? Um, example 3. Uh, in example three, they give us two points and they ask us to determine the slope of the line that would pass through those two points, okay? So um, in our solution, the first thing we're going to want to do is to join up our point E with our point F. So start and draw that, draw a straight line connecting those two points. Um, the next instruction says, subtract the corresponding coordinates to determine the change in x and the change in y. So when I'm uh, working with coordinates, um, I like to start with my coordinate, my point that's on the right, so in that case it would be f, and just write down its coordinates, 8 and 6. And then underneath it I like to put the other point, e, and write down its coordinates 4 and negative 5. 
okay? Just kind of helps me uh, not make errors if I write them down underneath each other. So the rise is the change in the x coordinates. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to take this point here, 6, and I'm going to subtract negative 5 from it. So I'm going to write down the rise is equal to 6, subtract negative 5. And since it's a negative number, I'll put it inside a bracket. So you'll remember from integers that when you subtract a negative number, the rule is that you add the opposite of the second number. So the opposite of negative 5 is 5, so I'm going to have to change that into 6 plus 5, and that's 11. Um, my run uh, is the change in the x-coordinates, and so here's my first x-coordinate, 8, and here's my second, 4. And I'm just going to say 4, pardon me, 8, subtract 4, and that's equal to 4. So my slope is equal to, this will want me to write in, rise over run again, so it's going to be 11 over 4. Now, 11 is a prime number. It doesn't have any factors besides itself, 11 and 1. So there's not, I can't really reduce it. The only thing I could do with this is I could divide 4 by 11. So uh, 4 goes into 11. 4 times 2 is 8, so 2 and the remainder of 3. So 4 and 3 quarters, or pardon me, 2 and 3 quarters. And I could write that as 2.75. Okay? Um, generally speaking, leaving them as improper fractions. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It, it, it's very clear what the rise is, what the run is, when you leave it as an improper fraction. But sometimes you do see them expressed this way. Um, and now example three leads us to an important formula, okay? Um, and so we're gonna start out and say, a line passes through points A and B. And the coordinates, the coordinates of point A are given as x1 and y1, and the coordinates of B are given as x2 and y2. So let's just take a look. Let's put a, let's you know, just, we don't have a scale here. So it's pretty hard for us to say exactly what this point A's coordinates are. So that's why they use this general x1, y1, okay? And point B, could be over here. Okay, so that's point B. And it has the coordinates uh, x2 and y2. So these little numbers that are uh, following the x's and y's, they're called subscripts. Okay, So these are subscripts here. And what they do is they tell us that the x's that we're talking about, x1 and x2, are generally speaking different numbers, okay? And as are the y1 and the y2. They also tell us that x1 and y1 are associated with one point and x2 and y2 are associated with the other point. So the formula that we're going to use, the, this, and it's quite an important formula, is that slope is equal to the change in the y is represented by y2 minus y1, that's our rise, and the change in the x or our run is represented by x2 subtract x1. So um, this formula is an important formula, and I don't know if you guys keep a list of formulas uh, somewhere handy so that you can refer to them. Uh, or you keep a sticky that you move from homework page to homework page with you that has your formulas written down. But that is an, an important formula and you're going to use it a lot. So you might want to uh, get it written down somewhere. It would be given to you on any test, but when you're doing your homework, it, it's nice to have the formulas convenient. Um, so uh, let me just finish off by drawing the line between these two points here. Okay. Just indicate that this is y2 subtract y1. And this run is x2 subtract x1. Okay. Um, on to an example which will use this formula. Okay.